Hi all, welcome back to another video, all things to do with clean rooms and this week we are looking at HEPA filters. So we do have a special guest coming in at some point during the video as well. Okay, so HEPA filters. So HEPA filters are commonplace in everyday life. So you'll find a HEPA filter in your car. You may have an air purifier at home. You may have a fancy vacuum cleaner that helps to keep a billionaire very happy in a Singapore penthouse. And if you're going on board an aircraft, not so easy in the age of coronavirus, but um, there are still some flights, so you will get HEPA filtered air in the cabin as well. But the HEPA filters that we use in pharmaceuticals and healthcare are of a different standard. So HEPA stands for High Efficiency Particulate Air Filters. And there are two standards. There's a European standard, EN1822, or there's a global standard, ISO 29463. And the scale on the European is to have HEPA filters of the highest capacity, which are H14 class filters. And these have a retention rate of 99.995% of 0.3 size micron particles. So just as a reminder of what micron particles are, I'll just hand over to our special guest, Professor Montague Smythe. Oh, well, hmm, interesting. Okay, so you want to know about microns. Well, the microns are shown on the slide here, and you get a sense of the different sizes. So we have coffee grounds that are relatively large, then going down to little grains of sand, then to table salt, human hair, pollen, and then we get to the limit of human visibility. Then we have in our blood, puffs of smoke, red blood cells, bacteria, which are down to about one to 0.5 microns for the smallest ones. So by having 0.3 microns, then we are guaranteed to filter out most of the things of concern. <laughs> See you later. Well, that was interesting. So he's a little bit of a strange character. Um, anyway, HEPA filter is a type of mechanical filter, and it works by forcing air through a fine mesh that traps harmful particles. And HEPA filters are not new, they've been around since the uh, early 1950s and they were first used in like atomic weapons research, then they went into electronics industry and then came into pharma in the 1960s. Now according to the uh, strict requirements of GMP, then HEPA filters need to be tested regularly and a key test for HEPA filters is for leaks. So this is verified by um, looking at the filter media, the seal and the frame. And we show this by trying to pass through particles of 0.3 microns through the three filter and its surrounds. And leak tests need to be formed every six months in grade A and grade B clean rooms and every 12 months in C and D clean rooms. Another important thing is the load to the filter. And this is represented by the pressure drop at the filter and it's important that this remains in control because one it requires more energy and two it leads to a drop in air change rate should they get this pressure overload. Um, also to um, protect um, filters by filtering out lots of the outside um, rubbish that gets bombarded at the filter then we do have these things called pre-filters which is shown on the slide um, there. And the pre-filter is to protect the primary HEPA filter. Um, and these also have their own um, European standard, EN779. And we would use F19 filters. And these do need to replace fairly regularly in order to stop the filter from um, blocking. So that's good practice doing that, checking the pressure drops, those factors. Um, so, how do HEPA filters work? What are they doing? And this is kind of the last point um, I'm going to make. So, you can see on the slide there's four key mechanisms. There's kind of a fifth which is related to electrostatic charging, but there's different schools of thought, so I shall um, skip on that one and focus on, 
on these ones. So HEPA filters work as air is blown by a fan through filter fibers. And the HEPA filter acts to catch particles and to stop them entering the clean room. So the fibers are preventing, are preventing the particles. Remember from previous videos that we looked at the um, fibers and particles are quite different physical things. Anyway, these mechanisms to trap particles is important because particles will include microbes and also other types of particles that will be carrying microbes, so like rafts of matter. Anyway, these mechanisms are, first one is called interception. And this is where particles will adhere to the fibers within the HEPA filter. The second is impaction. And here particles are embedded in the gaps between the fibers. The third is diffusion, where the path is blocked, the particles can't get through. And then we have a fourth mechanism, which is sieving, so much like a sieve you would use to sieve flour, where here the particles are simply too big to pass through the filter due to their relative size and diameter. OK, so quick video this time. And we've looked at HEPA filters and why they're important for contamination control and how they work. And we also had our special guest with us who um, is lurking in the corner over there. So I'll just go and have a word with him. Okay, till next time. Cheery bye.